Well, good evening. We're going to get started. Uh, my name is Jeff Erickson. Great to have you here tonight. This is our reschedule event from, I can't remember if it was cold or snow it was the last time we were unable to meet. Uh, so uh, tonight we're going to share with you some key information uh, related to registration and thinking about next year. Uh, for those of you uh, with, with whom this is your last child at MHS, this is your last parent night uh, for registration that you have, uh, congratulations on that. And also we have Phil Trout with us. We're just the warm-up act for Phil Trout who will talk to you really about the process looking at post-secondary. So I'm going to give a couple of pieces of information with you. It's great to have you here tonight. All right, well, that ends our presentation. Uh, <laughs> thanks for coming tonight. Oh, there we go, School of Opportunities. So tonight, in the first part, we're going to talk a little about next year to registration. And uh, one of the things we look at MHS is that we have tons of opportunities for all students. I'm part of the fact that we're a comprehensive high school, so we have everything from an amazing home improvement class uh, to a wider variety of facts classes, to math classes, to STEM classes, to Vantage. There are tons of opportunities for students. And I always mention the fact, too, as you look at that, uh, the best schedule for your child is a schedule that your child creates and is really excited about for next year. So there is a lot of information. There's plenty of time to sort out what is the right fit. Counselors will be working with your students in small groups and other ways to start looking at those options for next year. So, School of Opportunities, tonight of the four A's, we're emphasizing the academics and point out those options. This is Heart Week, and uh, just a couple plugs for that event. Uh, tomorrow, uh, no, Thursday night is uh, the Valentine's Day dinner benefit uh, that goes for family and friends. So if you're not sure where to dine, you can dine right here in the high school cafeteria with food by Spazzo. All the money this week does go, as I mentioned, to family and friends, which really serves students in the broader, com in our community, uh, everything from a dental van bus that comes here several times a year where students who have not received dental care have a chance to have that opportunity uh, to field trip money, ACT testing money, anything like that. So it's an amazing organization. Uh, today, as part of Heart Week, we had our first round of our junior day and really around building community. This is a photo from this afternoon. So students with last names A through LAW met today and they work with seniors talking about what will it mean next year when they're at the helm of the school and really the importance of community. Tomorrow, we'll have the rest of the juniors at 11.30 to 2.40 working with, with seniors and Keith as well. So if you have students there today, the whole message is the importance of community, helping others, and uh, helping uh, make this, amaz this uh, amazing school. So part of our work tonight is just around goals. I'm just gonna focus on the last box. It's really helping find students' passion in all the opportunities that we have here. We focus on relationships, we focus on engaging classrooms, but that last box is helping students find their passion with the options that we have. So lots of opportunities, lots of ways for students to get connected and find what they wanna do. Sometimes students find out what they don't wanna do after taking a class. And sometimes it's better to figure that out when you're not paying for it uh, than when you, they get to somewhere in post-secondary. So all the things you see, you'll hear, some, you'll hear about some of those programs tonight. We have lots of videos that we have on the website that I've pushed, up, pushed out on social media about some of the course options. We try to really emphasize student voice and even some of the meetings that happen before school for students to share about specifics related to a course. Why should you look at this class? What are the benefits of it? What have they enjoyed about that class? So really emphasizing student voice. So academics is our focus. This is the last part of connecting the dots for the final year to figure out what that schedule should look like, leading to US Bank in one year. And we'll continue that path. It's probably looked like this to this point. Now they're entering their final year with lots of opportunities. So take advantage of the information tonight. I'll come back in a few minutes. We'll hear from a variety of people. But I encourage students to take the time, figure out what is the right course selection for them, what they want to do, not their friends, what other people are doing simply, what makes sense for them with all the options we have. So with that, I'm going to bring up Dave Beerley, one of our counselors, and he'll share some information with you as well. So welcome. We'll see you in a little bit. Mr. Beerley. Thank you. Um, so a little quote from Abe Lincoln to get us started as we work through the options for seniors. The best way to predict your future is to create it. Um, I, I, you, you will see as we go through the slides here, senior year more than any other year is th there are so many opportunities. It's, it, it's pretty exciting. It, it, it actually in a lot of ways starts to look like uh, college options when you're looking through course catalogs in college when you look at all the options. One 
just quick thought I want to throw out there too as we start to look at some of these. Mr. Erickson kind of referenced, you know, sometimes it's good to figure out what you don't want to do. And, and I would just say as parents too, to think about that, if, if your son or daughter ends up researching a class and they decide to sign up for it and they go and it's not quite what they thought it was, I, I, we personally in the world of counseling think that can be a win also that there's, there's, a, there's something you got a chance to try something out and you saw what it was. So you might be creating your future through process of elimination here and there and that, that can happen and I don't think that's really necessarily a bad thing. Um, we, in the end, to get to the bank, you need 22 and a half credits. And uh, we are, we do seminar, we do registration seminar with students every year, so they've heard this message over and over and over. We will be doing junior meetings in the next uh, two, three months here. And the first part of the junior meeting is we look over credits. So don't see this number and panic. You, you would know, you'd be well informed if something was not on track with this adding up to 22 and a half credits by the end here. So we're all over that and your, your students are all over that too because they've been told about it many times. So you'll see that the graduation requirements are four years of English. So English is the one thing that no matter what, no exceptions, there's always English in your schedule pretty much. Social studies, there are a lot of options where you'd be doing it for your full senior year, but technically you only need a semester of it as a senior. And most students will be wrapping up their graduation requirements for math and science at the end of this year, but the vast majority of students will choose to continue with math and science into their senior year, and that's a very, very good thing. Um, lots of, a lot of our different programs you'll see below include there's ways to reach these requirements within all of those different programs. Vantage, IB, AP, um, lots of different opportunities that we'll get into the specifics as we go. Uh, something that's really important to talk about, and my guess is Mr. Trout will touch on this a little bit in his presentation, but the way, the way things work in terms of applying to college, when you're applying to college, they're usually just seeing the courses you chose for senior year. So the kind of final impression you are making on a college application. They're seeing your grades from 9, 10, and 11, and then they are seeing the coursework you chose for senior year. So it kind of goes without saying that if your senior year is filled with a lot of fluff, then that comes off and that's, that's fairly obvious. Like it, we're not really, you're not really fooling anybody if you're doing that. It, it shows on our transcript, it's clear as day. So it's really, senior year is really a opportunity to challenge yourself. We're, I'm trying to, uh, trademark the phrase full steam ahead in the senior year. So round of, round of applause, is that a good? Yeah, see, nautical. Okay, I'll, maybe I'll keep working on it based on that response. But um, so anyway, uh, getting into English, like we said, everybody takes English and you can see just even if you don't even bother reading those, wow, that, that is a lot of different options. Um, the, it, it's important with all of these different options to read the details in the skipper log, and we'll show you that as we go on. But many, if, if your students are accustomed to the idea of doing a year-long English class, that's what they've been doing for basically their entire lives. Senior year is an opportunity to do a group. We, we have the bottom option is you do a group from the A section, which is English 12 or English 12 honors, which kind of takes care of the required stuff, and then they get to do some elective type work in the other semester. So that's the bottom option. The top option is continuing with doing a full year long course. It would be two semesters. We have several IB options. There is an AP option within Vantage. There's another AP option within, um, within just the regular, uh, in the regular traditional school. And uh, lots of different ways to meet your English requirement within Vantage. So there's, there's a ton of different options and like we said, every single senior is going to be taking English, so this is definitely one to dig into and figure out if there is something that really sparks their interest and it would be something that they would enjoy. So uh, next up is social studies. A lot of options in social studies too. Like we said, you only do need, you need a semester of social studies. And um, the, the two probably most common traditional options are students doing global studies and economics or AP psychology at the high school. That's where we have the most sections. I think as, as you look at different ways to meet that requirement, any student who's taking AP psychology or is taking global studies and economics, if they're thinking that's what they wanna do, 
it would be at least worth doing a little bit of, of research on what that would look like within Vantage. So within Vantage, you can meet your global studies and econ requirement within the global sustainability uh, Vantage strand, or you can take meet your social studies requirement through AP Psych within the healthcare, uh, the health sciences strand. So I mean, those are different areas where, and Vantage uh, business in a global economy, you can meet it with AP Microeconomics. So if you, if you know you're meeting the social studies requirement, you're thinking, well, what's maybe a different way to do this? You know, a different approach to it. Um, that's another way to do it, and it meets the requirement just the same, and are, they're great experiences for students. Math, too many options to list up here, but needless to say, you, you want to have, students should be continuing in math, and our math teachers do a great job. They have, they have become very systematic in their recommendations. I, I believe the recommendations are listed on Skyward. Every student I've met with so far knows exactly what their math teacher is recommending. Uh, and if there was any question on that, you could always email the math teacher and ask that. But the math teachers have, uh, have already started those conversations. So continuing with math is very important. Math is definitely not a subject. If you're planning on continuing, continuing your education after high school, it's not a great subject to take a long vacation from. There's, there's a lot of research that says that that's, that's pretty problematic for students when they jump back into math. And luckily, that's not a... I, Kids, I think, are so used to just taking math that they just nod and go, okay, I'll just take math, and they just go along with that. So that's, that's a good thing because I think it helps them a lot down the road. So, um, and then for science, there are a lot of options. Also, if you have a student who did AP physics in ninth grade, they have basically worked through physics, biology, and chemistry, and then they would have, they can look at research or any number of things listed up here. Uh, mentions a fourth year of science is encouraged. The kind of standard option as a senior is physics. But like I said, we do have, I, my guess is with this year's seniors, it's probably, I don't know, between 50 and 100 students who have already done AP physics earlier. So a lot of different options. Some of the options, you can do AP envir environmental science within Vantage, um, within uh, global food sustainability. Anatomy is the course within health science. There's a lot of different ways to continue with science. If you didn't really want to do physics, but you wanted to continue with science in some other way, a lot of different options. And, uh, and, and we'll touch on some of the AP and IB, IB options as we go, but similar to, to math, continuing with science is definitely a good thing. Continuing with world language, I think each year as we, as we plan with students, you know, when I'm meeting with ninth graders, 10th graders, 11th graders, I think as each year goes by, there's more question of, well, should I continue with the world language? And I mean, the more world language a student has done to this point, I think that it gives them a little bit more freedom to decide whether they would want to continue with it or not. Um, a lot of times when we're having this discussion, people will say, well, what do colleges want for world language? And try to hesitate from answering that because there's 5,000 different colleges to speak on behalf of. There's some that don't require any world language. There's others that want to see a lot more. So it really depends. And so that if, if your student is really stuck on deciding whether to continue with their world language, that would be a good conversation to have with their counselor. They either make an appointment or we're gonna see every single one of them during seminars, so that would be a good thing to check in on. One common conversation we do have though is if, if a student is, has kind of passed the point where they're having a lot of success in the language, I do think that it's okay to step away from the language. If you're starting to, to struggle academically and it, it might feel like you've reach the point where it's okay to move on from it, but if it's going well and you enjoy it, to continue with it more is, is a great opportunity. And, uh, and, and something that can, that definitely looks, shows when we talk about having a strong senior year schedule, continuing with world language is definitely a component of that. Uh, art and PE are kind of the, the two extra things that students need to take care of, that I think everybody knows to continue to take English, science, social studies, and math. Art and, and PE are the two extra things. Most of our students have taken care of this in ninth and 10th grade. When, it, when I think about when I'm meeting with students, it's very rare that a student's going into senior year and, and hasn't done one of these things, but not impossible. That could, that could be the case. And it's another situation where when we're meeting with them in their junior meeting, that's something that we'd be looking at. Um, it is definitely worth reminding everybody that, so the, the sailboats represent Tonka online classes. If your student is going into senior year and realizes, oh man, I forgot about that pesky art class or that pesky PE class, 
there are ways to do that this summer, and it's not, not, not a major undertaking where you have to give up your whole summer, but you can, you can sign up for one of those classes of registration time and, and take care of that and provide a lot of flexibility in your schedule. So those are two of the requirements. You need a year of art, a year of PE. If students are planning on doing a PE waiver, they're probably already on track with doing that, but we could answer questions individually on that. Um, a good reminder too, if they are still thinking about completing their arts requirement or just have already completed their arts and want to continue with more arts, there is more than one way to do arts at Minnetonka High School. So we have fashion classes and interior design classes within family consumer science. We have a theater class, there's a new theater arts class this year actually within the art department. All the music classes are considered performing arts. Um, and there's different, there's more than just performing arts within music. There's some Tonka online classes that are a little different in that area. We have airbrush within tech ed. We have um, engineering design, lots of different things. So if your kid says, I'm really bad at drawing or painting or whatever, we still have a lot of other opportunities to fulfill that. Um, just to remind, a reminder of the PE and, phi, or and, uh, and health, just I'm sure everybody is aware of this at this point, but health is embedded. So that's the one thing you don't have to think about at registration time. We will put it in your student's schedule after the first day of school um, because it, so it doesn't cause confusion. It, it appears as a zero hour class. So when we did it before the first day of school, kids thought they had to get there early. So we stopped doing that and we put it in on day two and that's fine. So nothing to think about. They'll continue with that as a senior. Um, there's six and a half credits required for graduation. But I want you to know as counselors, when we, when we analyze all the transcripts, so a couple days before graduation, we're doing the final look through to make, every, make sure everything came through. We are not actually counting the credits for graduation. By definition, if you meet 22 and a half credits and you've met the graduation requirements, you have enough elective credits. So in other words, don't, I, kids don't need to worry that, well, I need to add some more here for electives or anything else. If you're a full-time student and you're signing up for the correct classes, the numbers all work out because there's things like when you're doing math and science as a senior, that actually counts as an elective credit. So six and a half, uh, half elective credits doesn't necessarily mean six and a half credits of art or PE or anything like that. It could mean an additional year of art or additional year of math, additional year of science. Every world language elective credit you take is an elective credit. So, so don't, I, I wouldn't stress about that number. Know that it will take care of itself as long as they continue to work through their, uh, their schedule. So a lot of new courses available this year. Um, I will, uh, I, a couple years ago, I talked about all the excitement for multivariable calculus and there was audible laughter in the room that people were that excited about that, but I stand by that. So some similar excitement this year, cybersecurity stands out to me as being a very cool and obviously very relevant class. Um, there's some of our classes that we've been offering in brick and mortar are now gonna be available Tonka online, AP European history. We've had success with kids taking AP world history. And so the decision was made to make that available for AP European history. Uh, human anatomy is available. There's some art options. There's, th there's been kind of a reworking within the world of math and IB that I think Laura will touch on. And there is a new uh, vantage strand this year in uh, computer science called the user experience design, which subsequently does meet the arts requirement also and works, with, uh, and, and works heavily with computers. So a lot, of, a lot of new opportunities out there. Differential equations is a crowd favorite for sure. So keep an eye on those if any of those stand out as, as, uh, as good choices for your students. Just a reminder, lots of different opportunities and we'll touch on these throughout, um, throughout the presentation. And the, uh, a, a couple of the, one of the specifics just to highlight for you, Project Lead the Way, if you've heard about Project Lead the Way, so it's a national program that is really encouraging students to enter engineering and architecture fields. And so the, the student who thinks they want to do engineering but doesn't completely know what that means and wants to see in kind of real life what does that mean would be a great fit to look at a Project Lead the Way course. And all of our Project Lead the Way courses are housed within the Tech Ed Department, Technical Education. And uh, that's the their little symbol there. So there's it'll say next to any of those courses, PLTW. And, and so that is a, oh, we have viruses, stay calm. Um, so, 
So that would be a great opportunity if a student, as they're going into senior year and saying, I, I, I really probably should try to figure out whether this is a good fit with, in, in terms of engineering or architecture, this is a great opportunity to do. And, uh, and, and kids have a lot of, kids really enjoy doing that, enjoy, enjoy doing those classes. Our instructors are awesome in those classes. Um, so next up, I am gonna pass the mic over to our Tonka Online Coordinator, Ben Sanderson. He'll take care of the viruses also, I assume. Thank you, I'll do my best for sure. Um, welcome everybody, thank you for taking some time out of your evening today to uh, listen a little bit more about uh, programs and specifically, I'm gonna speak about Tonka Online. Uh, my name is Ben Stanerson and I'm a high school teacher here but I also work really closely with our staff in building the Tonka Online program and kind of um, helping kind of uh, work through some of the things along those lines. And I also teach a Tonka Online class as well. So I'm really excited to share some of the things about our program here today and have you guys thinking about this as a potential way to take advantage of some of the great programming that Mr. Beerley talked about and also kind of maximize that, those, those times um, if there's some potential open hours. Um, so there's a few things that I want to share with you tonight that we're really proud about with our program for Tonka Online. When you think about online programs in high school, sometimes those two things don't quite mesh well together, um, but we're really in a good position to have a quality online program for our students. And many of the things that point to that quality, our courses are taught by our own Manitonka teachers. And so there's a lot of care that goes into designing the content and the curriculum. There's also a lot of contact with the instructor. It's not an online course where they give you the materials and you just kind of go through it on your own there's a lot of guidance from the instructor, um, even though it, it does offer some more flexibility. We're fully accredited by the state of Minnesota and NCAA certified, and there's a lot of different kinds of flexibility that is built into an online class. One is the time flexibility, but on the other hand, there's also the learning flexibility. And what I like to highlight about that is, often students might not need as much time in class as other students do, and so an online class in their area of interest or their area of strength can really help them pace themselves in a way that they can get the content, get the material, but maybe be spending a little bit less time in that area. And on the flip side, the, the opposite is also true. If a student needs a little bit more time, they're able to identify some of those um, areas, come back to the content, maybe rewatch the video or go through the lectures again on their own pace, find additional resources, and then work through it in such a way that they understand it a lot in a deeper way. So we really look to those um, ideas and ideals and we wanna be able to be in a position where we're offering challenging coursework as well. So you'll find a lot of um, AP options, especially for the um, senior level, where students can take a look at that type of option for their class as well. Um, a few things just to highlight by the numbers in the program. Um, we're proud that our curriculum and our content continues to grow. Our course catalog is um, approaching about 12 AP classes and, and over 50 courses. We're still a supplemental program, meaning we do not offer a full online experience, but we're there to fill in where it makes sense. And we have a lot of opportunities for students to do that. Um, our test scores are strong, and we're also in a really good position to be growing. Um, when you look at that number, that's a considerable amount of students that have experience now in our Tonka online environment, whether that be during a summer class or whether that be during their, their school year. So they really are looking at this as a way to maximize their learning. And I just wanted to close today, as you're considering Tonka online and hearing about how this fits in with a lot of your other programs, I wanted to close with a, a little bit of a glimpse into um, one of those students and some of the experiences that they've had. So I'm going to show you a short video. My name is Sam Dahl and I'm a Tonka Online student. I chose Tonka Online because it gave me more flexibility in my schedule and the ability to prioritize things. I learn best when I am able to create my own schedule. Because I took a Tonka Online course, I was able to fit more courses into my schedule. Tonka Online allowed me to continue my experience in the band program, as well as with the Minnetonka Research Program this year. In the future, I plan to program similar style courses to the Tonka Online program in college. I'm Sam Dahl, and I'm a Tonka Online student.
Great. Well, thank you, Sam. And for those of you that want to know more a little bit about the program, please check out our website, um, TonkaOnline.org. We all have a couple recorded webinars there, and we'll also be um, available out in the um, hall if you have some questions um, later this evening. Thank you very much. I'm going to pass things on to Ms. Herbst, talking about some AP options. the Advanced Learning Coordinator. I coordinate AP and IB and Advanced Programming here. And I know you guys know since you have juniors, we have a lot of options here. And you've probably heard a, a lot already throughout the three years about AP and IB. But I'm just going to highlight a couple of reasons why we think it's important for your students to continue to challenge themselves into senior year and consider um, taking an AP or an IB class for the first time um, or taking on an, an additional advanced class that they already have some experience doing so. So we have uh, 31 AP classes. So even if your student has taken some AP classes, there still are many available to them, as Dave talked about earlier, for senior year. And the idea of an, an, an AP class is it's designed to look like an entry-level college class. So the experience is the students move through the content quickly and they learn a ton, just as they would freshman year of college. And then there's um, an external assessment in May that students can take to earn an, an AP score that has a weighted grade or weighted credit attached to it for the MHS grade and then potential for college credit depending on a university they may go to after high school. IB classes like AP are college preparatory, they're rigorous. Um, IB has a whole philosophy behind it more, though, that's more even so beyond academics about developing your student as a critically thinking person. So putting themselves in, in someone else's shoes and be able to look at different perspectives and recognize that different perspectives exist and they can formulate their own opinions and thoughts about that and then how to communicate that. Some IB courses are one year and some are two years. So if your student isn't in a two-year IB course, they won't be able to jump into that, but we have many one-year IB course options in all of the different subject areas. Um, so if your student has or hasn't taken an IB course this year, there are still many available to them for senior year. And like AP, there's uh, an assessment component from the IB organization that also um, can potentially award students with college credit or advanced placement in courses in college. Um, and that also has the, the weighted grade attached to it for the, their MHS grade as well. And you can see that we, the vast majority of our students do experience AP and ID classes while they're in high school. Last year, 84 almost percent of seniors took at least one AP or ID course. And for, for one, I talked a little bit already about the weighted grade and potential for college credit. And the reason that we hope that students continue to challenge themselves into senior year in areas that they're interested in is for those, but also because we want them to have that experience while they're here in high school. Because it, it, they're rigorous courses that equip them with a lot of knowledge in that subject area, but it also really teaches them to be time managers and responsible and able to handle you know, lots of things that are going on in life and at school. And that's good practice for when they're out of the safety of your house in high school, and that looks very different at college. And you know, here we have a lot of support available for them with tutors, the writing center, math tutors, you know, drop-in academic support time, counselors, seeing their teachers every single day. There's a lot of a support available to them, so we hope that, that seniors are continuing to take advantage of these courses to prepare themselves for after. And on that regard, if, you're, if your junior hasn't taken uh, an AP or an IB course yet. We're going to look ahead to this summer. We're hoping particularly for students taking a first advanced class, offer this um, launch strategies for support with the idea being we want to help students walk into their senior year or whatever grade they're in with the tools for success in an advanced course. And some of that is specific to managing their time, having a planner, knowing whatever, whatever is going on in their life 
and being able to plan themselves out like that, but also some content specific support. Close reading, taking notes in social studies, whatever that may look like for the particular subject area they might be taking. So for students um, who are registering for advanced courses for next year, they can look for this further information later this spring about this option for next summer. I'm going to turn it over to Kim Haney, the director of Minnetonka Research. Good evening, my name is Kim Haney. Um, I'm the director of Minnetonka Research, and Minnetonka Research is a really unique experience that's unlike anything else the kids have taken at Minnetonka High School. Um, they get to choose a topic of their interest, their passion, and they really get to design their curriculum and what it is they're gonna learn within the framework of Minnetonka Research. So it's one hour out of their six period day. I'll give you some more details in a moment, but I'm gonna just start off by showing you a quick video with some student perspective. Minnetonka Research is a program where students are able to pursue areas of interest that they have. All you need to do well and enjoy research is just to be really interested in something. We develop our own kind of project and then work on this throughout the entire year. The relationship between the hormone relaxin and female injuries and female athletes. Food allergies, more specifically how to diminish the allergic response or inhibit it. Engineering mesenchymal stem cells and then we attach gold nanoparticles to them to essentially attack tumors within the body. The continuation of my project from last year, which is developing autonomous drones to fly into buildings and generate three-dimensional maps of them for search and rescue and other purposes. So based upon what they're interested in and what they're curious about, they'll design an experiment that'll go through the proposal phase. They have professional mentors to be able to help them with some of the technical aspects as well as the communication pieces along the way. And then they get to perform that experiment, look to see what they expect is gonna happen, but then see what really does happen and do the analysis of that and draw some conclusions. I think that one of my biggest takeaways from research is the connections that I've made, like the connection with my mentor, the connection with the postdocs at my lab. It's really dealing with things in a professional manner, how to proceed in the adult or in scientific or just professional world. It's like a year-long capstone project in that I've learned how to talk to adults and communicate, um, writing emails all the time. I have spent my lunchtime in research just to get things done because it's a quiet space. It's it's a great environment. We get the freedom to create our own course. We can research what we want. I think it's really exciting to be able to pursue something that I'm passionate about and really make the experience my own and kind of pursue things at my own pace and learn about the things that I want to learn about. It's really rewarding to apply you know, all the things that I've learned throughout my, you know, not even just high school, but even before that, um, and apply it towards something that I can really own and say, like, I did this and it's something that's unique and, you know, contributing to the scientific knowledge. All right, um, so Minnetonka Research is for students who have a passion for learning and a passion for research and who have already completed and um, successfully passed an AP or an IB course um, in science and or in their area of that would support their intended research. So for example, um, we don't just have, you obviously saw a lot of science um, experiments, physics, chemistry, biology, but we also have many um, projects going on that would involve astronomy, astronomy, engineering, linguistics, political science, um, social sciences, and so Really, as long as they can collect data and quantify it, it doesn't matter what area that they're really interested in pursuing a research project on, um, it's possible. We have some athletes who are pursuing exercise science and athletic research projects. We have musicians who are doing some music projects as well. Um, if they're in AP si uh, computer science, that's another great course that can support a research project because that computer programming is so important and they have a chance to apply it to something that they're interested in. Um, the course, like I said, is one hour out of their six period day. We also have extended lab times after school and on weekends as needed. Um, basically, they're going to go through, they'll do a research proposal development phase. Uh, well, they'll do background research, literature reviews, write a full proposal in terms of what is it that you're going to study, what are your objectives, 
your Gantt chart, your project management timeline, they move into the research development and analysis phase, and then they work into a communication phase all the way along. So we have four, we worked really hard this summer on 16 core competencies that we want all of our research students to leave the course with um, that we think are not only uh, great for our future researchers and scientists, but for anybody who's going to be going out um, post Minnetonka High School life. Um, and so those four core domains that have those 16 competencies built in within them are scientific knowledge, and really I would say content knowledge, depending upon what they're really interested in. Uh, the research process, uh, professional skills, project management, collaboration, uh, working with instructors and mentors and peers, as well as the communication and writing and speaking. And this is a growth model that we have in the program in terms of we, want, we know these kids are going to come in with many different skill sets in those domains. Um, we know they're going to grow in those and it's really amazing to have a chance to listen to them um, about their experiences and also share the work that they've done. At the end of the year, they do write a full scientific or, liter uh, or a journal article, excuse me, and they also create a poster and present that at our Minnetonka Symposium in the spring. Um, but along the way, they also have many opportunities to work with their mentors. We've had mentors from India, from um, Columbia University, like all across the country um, that we connect those students with, that they find connections with, um, and then um, I just lost my train of thought, sorry. Um, and so we connect those with those mentors, but they just have really amazing opportunities and their communication skills just grow so immensely, it's fun to see. So with that, I'll be in the back. We do have a couple upcoming um, uh, events coming up, March 20, or excuse me, February 20th and 27th. And during MAST, we'll have an open house upstairs in the research lab for students and for parents. And we also have a webinar on February 25th at 12.30. If you can't make the webinar but you're interested in learning more, if you go ahead and sign up for that webinar, you'll get a link with a recording of that that you can watch later. And as always, just reach out with any questions you may have. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Roger Andre from Vantage. Kim always has the best stories. Um, I love the research that our students are doing. And one of her, she just told me tonight that one of her students had a, a fish die in his research project and now is his research is being reviewed to make sure that he's not being cruel to animals. Um, so my name is Roger Andre. I'm the director of Vantage, and I'm going to start by um, showing you a little video of our students telling you about their experiences at Vantage. What is Vantage? Vantage is professional. Vantage is off campus. Vantage is real world. Choose a strand. Digital journalism. Business analytics. Business in a global economy. Health sciences. Global food sustainability, economics, and the environment. Design and marketing. Guest instructors will give you their real world insights. You'll be connected to industry professionals in the field of your choice. Vantage is a real world immersive learning experience. Get a personal mentor to guide your learning. My mentor works at Optum Health. Then work on real projects for the companies you could work for someday. Like Best Buy, Target, Cargill, Valley Fair, Sunopta, and Medica, just to name a few. I help develop marketing materials for an upcoming realty company. How would you like to add that to your college application? Vantage has options for Chinese and Spanish immersion. Para incluir a todos. Vantage is helping me bring my Chinese to the next level. Vantage Bangwo de Zhongwen Dai Dao Xia Yiga Jibia. What is Vantage? Vantage is opportunity. See if a career strand is right for you before college. Vantage has helped us develop our own company, a consignment based resale store. Vantage is taking what we know to the next level. Vantage is life. And it's waiting for you. Okay. Um. So if you're not familiar with Vantage, I'll spend a few minutes explaining what we do uh, in Vantage that's different from uh, uh, the, what happens at the high school. So just like at the high school, we, we start with students. And this year, we have 285 students in Vantage. And they're organized into six strands, which I'll show you on the next slide. Um, and we have Minnetonka High School teachers teaching in Vantage. And the difference is that um, in the high school, most teachers are teaching a single subject in a classroom. In Vantage, we take two different academic di disciplines, or three sometimes. And the teachers team teach around a strand theme. So um, right away, there's a difference in how the day goes because they're not taking one class at a time. They're taking a couple classes at the same time. And every day, it's different because the teachers uh, bring in different kinds of activities. Um, and I'll talk about what some of those are. 
So the most important part of the Vantage experience is down in the lower right, which are our projects. All of our students do a fall project and a spring project. Some strands do more than just the two, but most of them have uh, two seasonal projects. Projects last about three months long. They work with a small team of students, and they work with an outside partner on a real problem. And uh, I'll give you two examples. We just finished these two projects today and set them up for spring uh, student teams. One of the teams is going to work with Lifetime Fitness. And Lifetime Fitness has a huge database of uh, training uh, videos that they deploy to the 38,000 worldwide employees. And they have never really tracked uh, how effective the training is, and they have a lot of things they want to measure now. And our students are going to go into the last three years of data, and there's like a million six hundred thousand rows in this database, and analyze the effectiveness of their training programs and uh, what kind of use they're getting. Um, and that's in our business analytics strand. And the other, that's, that's an example of a very large company that we work with. On the other end of the spectrum, we also finalized a project this week with Ely Outfitting Company, which is a canoe outfitter in Ely, Minnesota. And they have uh, three places where they track different kinds of customer data, and they've never tied them together and done an analysis of how much they convert from people who, re who make an inquiry on their website, and then they have a, a, a sales relationship, and then they close the deal. They want to understand how well that works, and they've got a lot of data, and our student teams are going to go in there and, um, and fish around in that data and hopefully give them some insights that will help them be more successful marketing in the future. Uh, both of those um, project examples are from our business analytics strand. If you're in a different strand, the projects are very different. Uh, in the bottom middle, each one of our students gets a mentor. So uh, we have 285 students this year. We have 285 mentors. I'm sure there's a few mentors in this room. Uh, the, the students meet with their mentor a, a minimum of nine times during the year, and they have nine conversations around topics that we recommend to students. A lot of mentor relationships go well beyond that, but that's the baseline. In the upper left, we incorporate a lot of guest instruction. Um, examples of that are a professor from the University of Minnesota was just in talking about how climate change is affecting Minnesota. And the reason that we do that, so that's in the uh, global sustainability strand, uh, there's a chapter in the, in the AP Environmental Studies class about climate change. And the reason we bring a professor in to talk about it is he's been doing research on that topic for 30 years and talks specifically about how it's affecting Minnesota and connects it to something real that's being done out in the professional world and takes it out of the academic world. So, um, so that's an example of a guest instructor. We also do a lot of site visits and events. Um, in about uh, Site visits are where our students get on a bus and go off to, say, Best Buy headquarters and spend a few hours walking around Best Buy headquarters and learning from the different um, components inside Best Buy about how they, they contribute to the overall mission of the company. I don't know if you've been at Best Buy's headquarters, but it's a very uh, fun place to, to, to walk around in because there's a lot of color and a lot going on. And finally, we have events. So in about, about two weeks, we're going to have our HR day. All of our students in all of our strands create a resume and they create a job description for something that they would like to do in the future. And then we have HR experts come in and talk about how to get jobs. And our students ask them questions. They sit on panels. And then all of our students get a mock interview with, uh, with one of these HR professionals and, uh, and a resume review. So that's an example of an event. And we have a whole bunch of those over the course of the year. So, um, you have two decisions to make if you're interested in Vantage, and the first one is, is it right for my son or daughter? And the second uh, decision to make is which strand to participate in. And there's, um, there's some misconceptions about Vantage, and one of them is that Vantage is all about business, and parts of Vantage are all about business. Two of our strands are very business-oriented, so in the right column, the, the two on the lower right, global business and business analytics, are uh, business-based. They incorporate other things, so business analytics is AP Statistics and IB Global Business. So that's a combination of, of stats and business. Global Business is Econ. It's got an AP Seminar class, which is an English class, and IB Global Business. Um, upper right is Digital Journalism. That incorporates uh, video production and, and, and English. Lower left, Design and Marketing, is Business and Art. And then Global Sustainability, I mentioned that earlier, AP um, Environmental Studies combined with Global Economics. Upper left is health sciences, which um, really took off last year. Two years ago, we had, uh, or last year, we had 16 students in that strand, and it was a three-period strand. And we changed it, and we add, added an opportunity for students to get certified in EMR or, or um, registered nursing. And we went from 16 students to 85 students, so that's become a very popular choice. There's a lot of students that are interested in kind of uh, dipping their toe in the water of the world of healthcare and uh, understanding it experientially. 
So finally, uh, on the bottom bar there, it shows our new strand for next year, which is the user experience design strand, which is a combination of computer science and design. So my last slide is why we do Vance, which is we are trying to set our students up to go out into the professional world or whatever world they're going into next, which for most of them is probably another academic environment, and be ready to excel. So we're trying to develop a specific skill set that we think will allow them to do that. And um, I'm going to close with a little uh, story. I, I was on the phone today with two former Vantage students, and one of them was in Madrid, and the other one was in San Francisco. And they're both students at Northeastern University in, um, in Boston. And Northeastern's very into experiential learning, so it's kind of a Vantage at the college level. And um, they do something called co-ops, which are internships. And everybody at Northeastern does one, two, or three co-ops. Most of them do one or two. And the, the young woman who was in Madrid is a junior, and she's setting up for her third co-op. She's on her second one in Madrid. And we were asking them if Vantage had done a good job of preparing them for, for what they were doing now. And they both said they, they wouldn't be doing what they were doing now if they hadn't done Vantage. Um, she said, I wouldn't have been allowed to do three co-ops if I hadn't done Vantage, because between my AP and IB classes and, and the fact that I was very well prepared for experiential learning, I was able to apply for uh, a co-op in my second year, and most students aren't able to do that. And the guy in San Francisco basically said the same thing. The reason we're, we're reaching out to these students is we're trying to get uh, colleges to endorse Vantage as a great way to prepare students for, um, for whatever they're gonna go on to next. So uh, I too will be in the back at the end of the program, and you're welcome to stop by. We have some posters and ask questions about the program. We have an event Thursday morning if you want to come over to Vantage. We're, um, we're at the Welsh Building on Baker Road, um, and we have an event before school to talk about three of our strands. And there are some other events that we're running before the end of registration season, and they're on our website. So if you want to uh, go deeper and learn more about Vantage, that's a great way to do it. Thanks. All right, good evening. Um, so. We have lots of conversations with students throughout their high school experience here at Minnetonka about discovering their passion. Um, something that I want to briefly share with you about is, is this capstone experience that we're now offering at Minnetonka High School. And it's really an opportunity for students to um, do some work in an area of passion. Um, so what capstone is, it's a two week off campus experience at the end of the school year. Um, we work with students and teachers to close out their um, semester two work early and they will have a 60-hour experience um, participating in an internship, doing job shadowing, doing a service project or independent study um, in an area of passion or interest. And at the end of that experience, on the last day of school, those students actually showcase um, their work at a Minnetonka High School community fair. Um, so as you think about your student's senior year, um, the different things that they'll be engaging in. I want to point out Capstone as an awesome opportunity for um, students to discover um, kind of what their area of passion or interest looks like in the professional sphere, um, what it would look like if they engaged with it in an independent study setting, um, or if they participated in service learning. Um, so senior year will be about um, continuing to discover their passion and I would say the capstone experience, if your senior choos chooses it, is an opportunity for them to experience that passion um, in, the, in the real world. One of the requirements that we have for that, um, one is making sure your students and their teachers are in agreement about closing out the semester work um, early. And then the other piece is students need to be enrolled in two or, or two or more advanced courses. So as you think about that senior year and are planning ahead, um, if Capstone is something that you would like your senior to participate in, uh, we do ask that they're enrolled in two or more um, advanced courses. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gibbs. So we're going to close up this part of the presentation. It's bringing Mr. Trout just with some key information. The curriculum of Paris, February 21st. <clears throat> this has really changed over the years where really all grade levels are welcome. Registration March 1st to March 10th. Uh, there will be conferences in that mix, so there's a good chance to connect with your current students' teachers. As in the past, they can wait until March 10th at 11.59 to click all of their requests for the following year. It doesn't matter when they do that. We take all that information and then build the master schedule. So uh, registration information online. Uh, go to the website. This year, it is new. The skipper log is online. So if you go to the website for registration, you'll click on that. All the courses are obviously there. Videos are, uh, are embedded within certain courses. 
links for more information. So the skipper log is all online. You can print off, you can see where it is from the home page. You can print off specific PDFs if you'd like for different departments and courses. It's all there, all online, all current. So with that, I'm going to come back at the very end, but I'm bringing up Phil Trout and share some information as you look at post high school planning. So with that, please give a warm welcome to Mr. Trout. Uh, Mr. Erickson, thanks so much. Uh, I don't know whether or not uh, we can do the house lights here, but I think it would be helpful. How many junior parents in the room where their junior is a firstborn? Can we find that out? Okay, so uh, I don't know. I, uh, really, I didn't take differential equations, but that looks like about two thirds or so. so so let's see, that means we've got some junior parents in the room where they've, they've had a child be a senior, graduate from Minnetonka, uh, maybe do some post-secondary enrollment. Can you like wave your hands, those of you who are the experienced, okay, we want to get a good look at you. Th those are our new best friends in the room, right there. Uh, Junior parents, we wanted to have a chance to get together here tonight because right now, as we start the second semester of your child's junior year, we've turned the calendar to 2019. And in 2019, a lot is going to happen to your junior. Not the least of which is they're going to become a senior. Um, in the next 12 months, uh, a lot of conversations are going to take place about life after high school. Um, for some of you, that's going to include post-secondary planning. For some of our students, that's going to include looking at military service, researching job opportunities, taking a look at uh, some vocational interests, career pathing. Um, you all just had a chance to see first semester grades of your junior. So you know how the junior year is going uh, with, with four months of it left. So we just wanted to take a moment here tonight to be able to do uh, what we're calling a kickoff because um, you're, now, you're now getting into the final stages of your child's career as a high school student. Um, we aren't going to be able to cover all of these items here tonight. I will tell you that there will also be an information presentation that we do on post-secondary planning that we'll do in a webinar format here this month. But a couple of things that we want to be able to share with you right now is uh, when we meet with our juniors, one of the things that we talk with them is about the importance of doing a self-assessment, uh, some sort of self-examination. And those of you who went to the tables in the front tonight before you came in, you might have picked up this post-high school planning guide. We've got extra copies out there. But on pages five and six, there's just a fantastic self-assessment set of questions for students and for you as a parent to be able to go through and take a look at. Because what we try to pose to our students is, are they able to identify the one or two or three key characteristics key components that would make up their college search. And we're going to pose for them some kinds of questions like, do they want to go to their college and be a star? Do they want to go to their college and sit in row 14, chair number 9, and never be called on? Do they want to go to an ESPN school so that they can text their friends on a Saturday and say, turn on ABC, I'm in row 30? Um, but please understand that the college search process is very individual. It differs. Parents, if you have more than one child, it differs from one child to another. It may not be the same thing as your child's best friends or your child's siblings. Uh, their list of schools might look different than someone else's. There's lots of different ways that students can go about figuring out that certain colleges or universities might be good matches for them. For some students, they start with size or they start with location. We have students who were born in Minnesota, raised in Minnesota, they lived in Minnesota, all they know is Minnesota. They think college is the chance to bust loose <laughs> and go. 
We have a student in last year's class who went away to college and is at St. Olaf because they're not in the Twin Cities. We have students who pick certain locations because it's going to be different weather. We have students who are doing the research and they just love the fact that these, that these colleges have honors programs and they want to be a part of it or that these colleges do research and that they can get going on it right away or that this college has a certain athletic program that they want to be a part of. I had a meeting already this week with a student who wants to do rugby in college and that's how the college list is going to be built. That's fine. There are lots of different components that can come up. So what we're trying to do is help students find good matches, places that will be a good fit. I've got just enough time here to be able to go through and do a quick exercise with you. I just want to go in and do five quick sample types of colleges so that you can see how these characteristics, these factors might come to play. So let's just look at college number one. Here it is. Now college number one has 1,800 undergraduates and Division I athletics. That's stunning. It's ideal for the student who's interested in learning for learning's sake. It's known as the Dartmouth of the South. It's located in a small college town, has generous financial aid, has an honor code that's important to the students at this college. Lots of pre-professional and international programs, traditional liberal arts curriculum, the largest areas of studies are biology, psychology, political science, theater. This place has a southern look with a New England feel. College one. Let's go to college two. 16,000 undergraduates, 5,000 graduate students, a beautiful traditional campus located in a major city. It's long been known for the high quality pre-professional and co-op programs. All students participate in a freshman seminar as well as a senior capstone. Comprehensive curriculum, they've got it all. Engineering, architecture, business, the arts, computer science, criminology. They offer merit scholarships. D1 athletics. Hockey is the big draw. College number two. College number three enrolls 2,500 undergrads and is located about an hour away from LA. It's amidst the mountains on a beautiful campus with an East Coast feel. 10% of the students participate in a program where they design their own course of study. So no majors, core requirements or grades. Offers a traditional liberal arts but also has pre-professional fields like business and a 441 calendar. So students take a single course in May. College number three. College number four, located in a beautiful college town, the 9,500 total students have easy access to outdoor activities. It's especially strong in health sciences as well as business and marketing a recognized leader in undergraduate research with a brand new science research facility. Emphasis on internships. Division three athletics are at the center of school spirit, especially when they play their in-state rivals and tuition reciprocity for all Minnesota students. College number four. Finally, college number five, 5,000 undergraduate students, another 3,500 graduate students. 50% of the students come from out of state. It's located on the outskirts of a major city. Business, political science, international affairs, communications are big. Specialization in hotel, restaurant, tourism management. Not a lot of colleges have that. All core courses must be taught by senior faculty members they have a five-year master's degree program in business and law. Division I athletics include a recent national championship in lacrosse. Mountain resorts are a short hour away at college number five. Now, I mean, I don't know. 
Maybe one of these colleges is a type of college that would be a good fit for you or for your child. By the way, we can share with you the names of these five. Here they are. College one was Davidson. College two, you might have picked up on that if you were listening to Mr. Andre talk about Vantage, is Northeastern. College three is Redlands. College four is UW Eau Claire. College five is the University of Denver out in Colorado. Okay. So, but this whole thing about the college church, please don't start about names of colleges. Please don't start with that. Start with types, start with characteristics. Again, what we want to say to our juniors is, what are the two or three characteristics that are going to matter most to you? And that might be location, that might be size, that might be major, that might be cost, that might be sports. So these are some things that we're going to cover with juniors coming up here in March. Now, next steps. You've already heard here this, this item. We've got the registration seminar during the day with juniors. We've got the curriculum fair coming up. We have a college fair that's going to come up here on March 12th at YZ. The organizing body lets Minnetonka host the fair every other year. So this is Wyzetta's year. There's also going to be a program on March 18th at Chaska. We'll send information to our juniors about this. We've got a wonderful speaker coming here to this room on Monday night, March 18. His name is John McGee. He's on the faculty at St. Ben St. John's. He's just written a fantastic book called Dear Parents, a field guide for college preparation. It's primarily about cost and affordability. Uh, juniors, by the way, are going to get uh, the details of the post-secondary planning process in a seminar that we're doing with them in school on March 18th. And we'll have them do a couple of things that day in the, in the seminar in Naviance. Okay? I just want to take a minute here to say a couple of other things. Grade 12, that senior year, uh, Mr. Beerley referenced it earlier tonight, Students will have on their transcript their courses, but they won't have any grades. The vast majority of applications are filed in the fall of the senior year. So it's the grades the students are earning right now, grade 11, that will be the most important grades on their transcript. And colleges are looking to see how has this student grown as an academician? What are the trends? And they're going to pay particular attention to grade 11. Uh, they're looking at their activities, but not so much to see the length of the list as to see where it is that students have had a chance to make a commitment in one direction or another. Is there any leadership opportunity that they've pursued, either in an in-school activity or out? And colleges are always looking to see whether or not this is a student who will be a good fit for them. Colleges don't want to enroll students. Colleges want to graduate students. So they're looking to see who's going to be a good fit. Your job as a parent is to continue to believe in your child's abilities and to continue to take an interest in their studies and their activities and their teachers and to see if you can't have some kind of open dialogue about the post-secondary process. One of your new favorite questions should be, tell me again the two reasons why you want to go there. That's one of your new favorite questions. Um, I'm, I am going to take a minute here just to say in item F, please remember, you're not the one going. This isn't your search. It's theirs. Uh, for us as counselors, our job is to continue to support and affirm your child's interests and activities and abilities in the best way that we can. We want to help facilitate the discussion with the student and the family. We're going to have individual meetings starting in March with students in grade 11 about post-secondary planning. We want to involve the parents. We want to invite you uh, to join us for that. Um, we've got a number of the counselors who are here tonight in the room, and we also will be available to assist you with questions following this session. I know that Jennifer Stout's here, Teresa Exenberger's here, Katie Hagenson's here, Mary Beth Wig is here, Todd Popard's here, Dave Beerley's here, uh, and we also have uh, resources available to you in our College and Career Center. 
Parents, a number of you have heard your child talk about Naviance, the website tool that we use for research and for college exploration. And all parents, you have access to the Naviance website. You just have the first time you log in, you have to have a registration code. If you've never done that before, please come to the College and Career Center tonight. We're all set up to be able to give you your registration code and help you with that website. These are a couple of my favorites. One of the assignments I want to give parents is to be able to do some research on college cost. A really fantastic thing for you to go to is this very last one, myintuition.org. I promise you that in less than three minutes, you can get a real estimate as to what it might cost your child to go to one of the colleges that belong to myintuition.org. So, we're here to help you. We're here to serve you. We've turned the calendar to 2019. This is going to be a fantastic 12 months uh, as we work our way through the post-secondary process. This is an incredible experience. It's wonderful. We're going to have fun with you. Honestly, I'm going to turn the floor back to Mr. Erickson. Thank you so much. On the screen you see the counselors, many of them are here tonight, they'll be up in front to answer any questions. They'll be working with your students and uh, the process over the next few weeks is really figuring out what are those right course selections and obviously Mr. Trout talking beyond that. Um, I recently met with our alumni, we have them come back, Mr. Trout organizes a panel and uh, they spoke with us in December and some in January and I asked them about their preparation, they feel great about their preparation, I said any advice to incoming seniors and really to continue to uh, find their passion, challenge themselves. Uh, it's not the year to take the foot off the pedal and not do anything and just really enter into what sometimes they call a senior slide, uh, but just some, to continue to, to take advantage of the opportunities we have as a school. So take advantage of the time we have the next few weeks to figure out what those might be. We're here to help. Thanks for coming this evening and have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.